How do agents get paid? Let's talk about it because it's the buzz. Everyone's talking about it. People are like, hey, I heard that we no longer have to pay realtors. Hey, I heard that the buyers have to pay realtors. Hey, I don't know. How do you get paid? So let's talk about it today. How do real estate agents get paid? Did you know that a single commission, that realtors only get paid commission and they only get paid at closing? So we're gonna talk about it because one single commission actually is going to be split four different ways. So I know there's a lot of talk on the news right now that is talking about, you know, realtors getting like all this money and overcharging and all of these things. But let's actually talk about the facts today. How do real estate agents get paid? Let's get into it. So did you know that a single commission is actually split four ways? So the commission is actually gonna be split between the agent, between the broker for the seller and the broker for the agent. And then the agent and the broker for the buyer. So you have four different people in the transaction, the agent and the broker for the seller and the agent and the broker for the buyer. So how really do agents get paid? Let's talk about it. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rita Lewis with EXP Realty here in the Katy Houston, Texas area. And thank you for watching my channel and thank you for returning if you are have been following me for some time. And I am a real estate professional and also a new home counselor with EXP Realty here in West Houston. And I do assist both buyers, sellers, investors, renters with their real estate needs, dreams, questions, goals, and your timeline. So today we are going to discuss Today, we are going to discuss how do realtors get paid? I mean, I'm sure you've seen it all over the news. I've had some of my past clients call me and saying, hey, Rita, what is going on? What's happening in the real estate market? And they are actually concerned about me, so I appreciate that, but there is nothing to be concerned about because really there is not much that is changing. It's just going to be that we're gonna talk about some of the things that maybe some realtors have not been disclosing to their clients, but I have been doing this all along, so this will be nothing different for me. So let's talk about it. How do realtors get paid? So the first thing that you want to ensure when you're working with a realtor is that you have, if you're selling your home, you want to have some type of seller um, presentation prior to you selecting your real estate agent and during that presentation your agent should be going over with you what different options and services that they do provide and give you a price point based on those services and also if you are purchasing a home that is the exact same you will have a buyer's presentation and in that presentation, you should be going through the whole process of what it takes to buy a home, as well as the commission structure and how the agent will be compensated. And so what's been happening apparently is not all agents have been doing these consultations. And that is why it is so important that you as a consumer are educated on how do realtors get paid. So let's talk about it. So typically a realtor is paid by through commission and um, where you receive a percentage of the final sale price of the property. If the home does not sell or your client does not purchase a home, then you get paid nothing. So you could literally be driving around for months or weeks 
and you could be showing lots of properties, using a lot of gas, using a lot of expenses, but you will not get paid until that client actually purchases the home. And not when you purchase it, the realtor does actually not get paid until the home is completely closed, you have the keys in your hand, and the loan has funded. So that can vary. It can be as fast as 30 days, it could be 45 days, I've had to wait sometimes nine, 10 months. Um, if someone's building a new construction, you have to wait until that home completely closes before you actually get paid. And as far as the percentage, it is going to vary. So one thing that's very important to know about real estate is everything is always negotiable, including the real estate fees. Typically, most realtors, if you're selling a property, they will list a home anywhere between 6 to 8%. The standard has been about 6%. And the reason being is because that 6%, again, as I said in the beginning of the video, that 6% is going to be split four ways. So I work for a broker, which is EXP. If I list a home, then there is going to be my broker who's going to get a percentage me and then when someone is bringing their buyer to purchase the home they also have a broker so their broker is going to get a percentage and then that brokers and then the agent that is actually bringing the buyer so that is why the commission is split four ways so six percent may seem as if it's like oh wow the realtor is getting a lot of money but in reality, they may only be getting about 1.5 of that 6%. And so that is, is really how a, a realtor is going to get paid. So when you list a home, you have what's called a listing agreement. So when a seller decides to sell their property, they are going to sign a listing agreement with a realtor if they agree, hey, this realtor is going to do my marketing. They're going to make sure I have an online presence. They're going to ensure that my home has the best staging, the best photos. And um, like I said, it's going to be a lot of marketing. And so the realtor is going to be upfronting all of those expenses themselves whether the home sells or not. And so that agreement, that listing agreement is going to really outline the terms and conditions of the sale, including the realtor's commission. Um, that again, as I mentioned, is normally negotiable, but commonly it'll range, and I've seen it even as low as 5%, um, but the standard has been 6%, um, and that is just for the basic, you know real estate package now the closing process when that property is sold the seller um the seller's realtor is at that point as i mentioned before going to receive their commission based on the proceeds of the sale so it's really important up front i would normally ask my clients how much do you need to walk away with from the sale. And then that way we work within their confines to make sure that they are getting exactly what they need. Um, the realtor is going to be compensated for the work that they're gonna be putting in to sell the home. And then um, again, typically that's gonna be split between the seller's agent and the buyer's agent, as well as the buyer's agent's broker and the seller's, seller's agent's broker. So, um, based on the terms that are outlined in that listing agreement is how that realtor listing agent is going to get paid. Now, for buyers, how that works. So with a buyer, a realtor should be having a buyer um, experience and going over again the terms and the process of buying a home. Buying a home and selling a home normally takes about a minimum 180 different touches along that whole transaction to bring that home to closing. So you're gonna have your realtor, you're gonna have a, the selling agent if the home is going to be um, listed from, by someone else, you're going to have the title company, you're gonna have the lender, you're gonna have the appraiser, you're gonna have a home inspector. So there is many hands that are part of the real estate transaction. And I know I hear a lot of people saying, well, 
why wouldn't someone just do it themselves? They don't need a realtor. They could just cut the realtor out. Well, you can absolutely do that because that's why you see some people do a for sale by owner. But many of the people that I've worked with, they use a realtor because they want someone that is going to be professional, who has went to school and put the work in and they know the laws of real estate. They know the contracts of real estate. They know the negotiation that is needed in real estate. And they have all of the things that are necessary to make sure that their transaction is successful. Just like if you go to court, of course, you can go to court without a lawyer. Or let's say that you get, you know, somebody get they, they decided that, hey, I'm going to use a court appointed lawyer. Well, you it's that old saying that you get what you pay for. So if someone doesn't have the proper representation, then you know, you, I personally wouldn't want to be in a situation where I have to go to court or someone hit my car or something without the proper lawyer and someone who's going to know the legal aspects of everything. And that is often why people will hire a realtor because it is a lot of work that is involved and you want someone who knows exactly what they're doing, who's going to be able to get you the best possible price for your home and you know, just know all the ins and outs of a transaction of real estate because it is a lot that goes into it. Um, I sold my home before I was became a realtor by myself. I would never do that again because it took me about 10 months of just researching how to even do it myself um, before I was able to list it. Not saying that you can't because you can. You can definitely list a home by yourself, um, but it's just a lot that goes into it. And so me personally, I would rather hire a professional that is going to work on my behalf and give me the peace of mind knowing that they know what they're doing and I don't have all these questions because I am not the expert and you know, not having the time that is gonna be necessary to conduct showings, to get your home in front of the right people, to you know, do all of the things that go within those 180 touches of a real estate transaction. Um, so let's go back to the buyers again. So working with a buyer and how a, um, a buyer would pay a realtor the realtor would go over a buyer representation agreement. Um, the buyers can choose to work with the realtor to help them find and purchase their property. And in this case, a buyer's agent typically is going to enter into that buyer's representation agreement with the buyer, and that is going to outline the terms of their agreement and how the realtor will be compensated, which commonly that is going to be that we talked about that 6% if someone is selling. So that 6% is going to be split again three ways and 3% of that 6% would go to your buyer's agent and that would be split with their broker. My broker again, eXp. So at offer and closing, when the buyer finds the right property that they wanna purchase, and the realtor assists them in making an offer, negotiating the terms of the sale. Um, if their offer is accepted, the buyer's agent commission is typically included in the purchase agreement and paid by the seller and is part of the closing costs. That is how it is today. However, with this new no law that's going into place, they are looking at potentially having buyers pay for their own agents. We don't really know what it's going to look like yet. Um, I honestly don't see a big difference or a big shift if you have agents that are continuously educating their clients and ensuring that they understand this full process, then it's more than likely going to continue the same. It's just going to be the people that haven't been disclosing will now need to disclose or they won't be realtors. <laughs> and so for me, I have always disclosed, I've always had a buyer representation or a, a buyer presentation with my clients. Um, I've always done a seller's presentation to ensure that my clients are very educated prior to hiring me for my services. Um, now, if you are a tenant, so oftentimes, sometimes I will work with tenants that are looking for a rental property. 
and you know tenants may choose to work with a realtor to lease a property or a landlord may choose to work with a realtor to lease their property in this case the tenant or the landlord would also sign a buyer tenant representation agreement and that again will outline outline the terms of the engagement and how the realtor will be compensated okay and so um how that happens is when the tenant actually finds the property that they want to purchase the realtor assists them driving them you know meeting them around letting them in the homes you know doing the whole process submitting the proper forms required for the owner or landlord completing the application sub submitting their support supporting documentation um and everything that goes into that and then if the application is accepted then the tenant's agent typically will receive 50 percent of one month's rent paid by typically the owner or the landlord and this too will typically be split four ways even let's say that it's a rental that's only fifteen hundred dollars a month that fifteen hundred dollars will be split four ways and so um again many people will see and think like oh wow the realtor is getting all this money but really it's not it's, it's not going to be the realtor getting everything because that one month's rent is going to be split between the broker's agent and the broker and the seller's agent and then their broker so again many people are just under the assumption that realtors make a lot more money than what actually meets the eye and again realtors still do not get paid even on a lease until that person has moved in the home the money will then uh, the commission will then go to the broker then the broker will then pay out the realtor and however that terms work so i've had tenants move in and not get paid for that maybe for 30 45 days so um it's just going to depend. Again, someone could build their home. It could take six to eight months. The agent won't get paid until closing. And um, again, same with the renting. So it's just really important to note that while a seller does typically pay the commission today, both the buyers and the sellers, seller's agents, ultimately, the commission is going to be factored in of the overall transaction cost. And um, that may indirectly affect the sell of the price that is negotiated between the buyer and the seller. So also, commission rates and payment processes may vary depending on local laws and regulations for your area so it is essential that both the buyers and the sellers discuss and clarify these details with their realtor before entering into any agreements and remember again everything in real estate is negotiable so there is not a set price these are just customary for the market that i'm in here in texas and if you have a realtor friend message them let them know that it is going to be okay and we are going to be getting through this um, because they may be one of those people that are waiting three to six months to get a paycheck and um, people are making it appear as if realtors are getting a lot more than what meets the eye and granted i'm sure that there are people that have done unscrupulous practices and that's probably why this has happened you know because there's always one bad apple that can spoil the whole bunch but i know that we're going to get through this and if you do have any questions about real estate commissions move into the area relocation anything like that please do not hesitate to reach out to my contact information below if you have any questions about relocating to the west texas area or any of the surrounding communities here in houston I have built some very great relationships and with many of the local builders, the title companies, the lenders, everything like that. And so allow me to use my leverage as well as my relationships and experience to bring you the very best experience and opportunity and negotiate on your behalf. 
and I truly do look forward to working with you. So don't hesitate to reach out so that I can understand your unique lifestyle, your unique needs and wishes. In the next video, I'm going to be doing a private home tour of one of the communities here in Katy, Texas. And so stay tuned for that video. And thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you found this information useful. Any questions, go ahead and put those below and I will address those as well. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Stay blessed. Okay guys, so we are going to our first Houston Rockets game.